TBS's newest comedy, People of Earth, starring former Daily Show correspondent Wyatt Cenac, kicks off a 10-episode season, appropriately enough, on Halloween, October 31st. Cenac plays a journalist who gets sucked into strange happenings in the small upstate town of Beacon, the home of a support group for people who have had encounters with extraterrestrials. The show, which features an all-star cast including Anna Gasteyer, H. John Benjamin, Brian Husky, and more, is a comedy first, but has an off-kilter mythology and serial story at its core that gives it a different feel than most half-hour comedies. I had a chance to sit down with stars Sinek, Oscar Nunez, Alice Wetterland, Divine Joy Randolph, and Michael Cassidy, along with executive producer David Kissinger and writer-director David Jenkins at the New York Comic Con to talk aliens, improv, and where the producers have hidden the show's ending. Randolph and Wetterland on categorizing people of Earth. I don't think you can yet, right? And I think that was another thing for me, I'm sure for you too, that drew me to this project. Yeah. That I was like, I've never everybody, seen this before. I don't know what this is. Everybody wants to make the new hit show, right? And you really can't do that without taking a risk. And I think the yeah. show takes the risks that risk, I like. Yeah. And, and I that's why I appreciate it. There hasn't been like a Buffy in a long time. And um, that's kind of an element of the show I think that and it does that kind of mixture successfully um, but it is a risk and we have to see how it plays out Jenkins Kissinger and Nunez sure, I, I think a movie like um, what we do in the shadows does that really well too where it's it's a very heightened conceit um, but they're they're treating it very normally and they're approaching it like it's everyday life and in some way that tension is really interesting um, so the idea was to make the show filmic and actually really look good, but also do the sci-fi stuff in a way that was kind of mysterious and um, kept everyone kind of off balance as much as possible. We talked a lot about Close Encounters of the Third Kind, yeah. actually, yeah. and how with all the epic sci-fi elements, that's also just a very intimate show about a family that's sort of unraveling and the dad is having a nervous breakdown. That's a good one to look at because I feel like that movie, when you think about it, you're thinking, oh, that's, that's about the spaceship and the door opens and the lights. And really when you watch it, and the mashed potatoes, about mashed potatoes. Well, the, best, the most memorable scene potatoes. is like, it's this thing where Richard Dreyfuss is having a meltdown you're scaring at the, the dinner table. <laughs> and this means something. Yeah, it's kind of like the effect of the sci-fi stuff on the character is more interesting than the sci-fi stuff itself. And I think if you can get that balance right, you've got something really neat. And it's the twists and turns can be both story-based, but then you have this whole other thing where they can be character-based too, and you're trying to tell, you're using this overwrought, like, uh, huge engine to really tell these little personal stories. So you do have the tools of a sci-fi conspiracy show that you can pull out when you want to pull them out, and then when you want to tell a personal story, you can focus in and do that too. So what it weirdly is, is like getting like a Volkswagen bug and putting the engine of like a Ferrari into it. <laughs> and it allows you to do things that you probably shouldn't be able to do. Divine Joy Randolph and Alice Weatherland on Improv in the series. In the pilot, and I think when we knew we had Greg, we were like, oh, we can... We know what Greg does and there's ad-libbing. And, yeah, know, so we're we were improv in the, co- uh, the pilot. Yeah. No, no, yeah. That was fun. <laughs> it was a great time. And, like, some people are theater background, but, like, D- Divine is very funny. Like, she was being very humble. And it was, like, she's incredibly, like, sharp and funny. So there wasn't anybody that was hired that was that came to set that's, like, you know, just very serious. Like, it wouldn't get jokes. Do you know what I mean? Like, the second half of the time, it's like, oh, oh, you're joking around. Or whatever. There's nobody <laughs> was like that. You know? Michael Cassidy and Wyatt Cenac. I mean, I, these are some of the best improvisers I've ever seen. I mean, Brian Husky, I've been watching Brian Husky for seven years at UCB at, at, as a fan and as a, as a, just a guy sitting in the seats. And so when I, I think I only have two scenes with him in the, the first season, but in each case, when I go to work and I see that guy, I'm kind of having like a total theater nerd moment uh, every day. And um, yeah, I mean, these are some of the funniest people I've ever worked with. So it's like, it feels easy to uh, make it up with them. Yeah, I mean, I think the tough thing is, yeah, there are so many talented improvisers from Husky to Anna Gasteyer that you could just 
put the camera on them and just let it roll for 45 minutes and have something enjoyable and entertaining. The tough thing is, okay, we still have to stay on story. There's a lot to lift here. Mm -hmm. There are so many characters to service. There is, you know, this science fiction element. There is the sort of character development that has to go on. And so it's really, that's, I think, the tough thing is it's so much fun to watch everybody improvise and to take part in it. But then also remembering, all right, we still have a show to make. David Jenkins and David Kissinger on casting the show. It's a great cast. It's it was it was was it lengthy as far as casting it's pretty lengthy. goes? Yeah, we took our time and we really. I mean, the casting is it. It's the show, and it's like finding people that can do. Um, I mean, the cast is self-selecting at a certain point because you're looking for people who are really really funny. <laughs> who can do like an internal thing that is just good acting and people that weren't making fun of the characters they're they're the lawyers for their own character and it's really easy to play these people as kind of like schmucks or, or kind of like oh there's some goofball but to actually come in and play them with dignity and say yeah this person thinks his wife was kidnapped by reptilians and actually say but he's not an idiot He's not dumb. He actually has some worth, and he's just trying to figure this stuff out. When you see a, a funny person do that, to me, that's there isn't any better acting than that. Also, just the blend of very experienced improvisers like Oscar, and then more theater-based people like Divine. Uh, it was great to see that come together. And knowing that we had Oscar it gave us freedom to go with people who weren't as experienced as he is. Wetterland and Randolph on their characters. I auditioned uh, for it when I was in Hawaii on a movie, and there was this scene with her. I, I got a scene that was later on down the line um, of her going on one of her bad dates, and what that kind of... I really identified with her just being so freaked out by men in general and the way that they are and just, you know, how she feels like an alien in her in her world, um, that I, I loved it. I loved that. I, I love the opportunity to be able to freak out in a coffee shop, so you'll see that down the line. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was just so different. So different from anything I've ever done. Uh, and I, for TV, I pre predominantly do comedy, but not like this. And I don't even, until we did the show, I wasn't versed in sci-fi stuff. And so for me, it was kind of like a nice challenge. That I was like, okay, and like, right to for there to be no judgment. That was the hardest part for me in the beginning. Yeah. But it's funny because my character's like, guys, really. So that part was easy for me to be like, eh. no, stop, yeah, stop, yeah, stop, yeah. come on. But um, yeah, just like immersing ourselves in that world, and uh, cause it's accurate. I mean, for what it is, right. like the stuff that we talk about. It's real. Like, people have written books about it. Right. I mean, he's an amazing writer, but he didn't write that. Like, that's really... There's, like, different classes of aliens. Yeah. Like, different races. Like, how we are as humans. And so, that part to me was fascinating. And I was like... I think we were talking about, like, I don't know if you can make that part up. You know? Yeah. yeah or, like, people are really, like, putting in the time for nothing. Like... Yeah. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like that's a lot of like wasted Ozzie effort. Like the pilot, it's like something happened to him. You yeah, know? there's something. Yeah, but also what I think is nice in the heart side of things is that all of our characters have either moved to Beacon for some reason, or this is a very interesting place to be. But like, we all have some kind of struggle or milestone or. We're on the brink of a turning point, but we're not there yet, like when the show starts. And it's interesting that we've all experienced this thing mm -hmm. and all have like personal issues, right? It's that sense of like a little bit of like, right. I have to believe in something. For us, it just so happens to be this, right? Because I'm going through something right now and there's that nice thing of, I know every week, that these people are going to have my back and they're not going to judge me and we can process. So there is that alien element, but there also is like, like we were saying before, like when she, she'll tell us about her dates, 
and we'll legit be like, girl, like, yeah. let him go. Like, yeah. like real yeah. friends of like, yeah. and then it, it is funny because then there's that lapse of like, oh, right, I forgot. This is, we're talking about aliens though, right? right? right. But there's that moment where it's, it's Listen, really human and the heart is there. And we all have been told the same thing, which is that we're special, which is interesting that we're we all at this point in our lives that yeah. we all need to be told that by a, you know by an outside force we can't really like we're not making that conclusion on our own right now right and so that we're all gathered together knowing yeah okay i'm special you're special so we're special so what does that mean how do we figure that out what is you know yeah and um and yeah that's kind of where everybody's at in the beginning Cassidy and Senek on why they joined the show. Uh, employment? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think contractually, once a pilot goes, you're kind of like, yeah. they can take two years and you're kind of stuck in there. I mean, the, 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 you know, it's all the stuff that's on the poster, so to speak, right? Like yeah. the uh, Greg Daniels, Conan uh, ness of it is like, uh, it feels like, uh, you, it feels like a pro gig right from the beginning. Um, and then, yeah, once we're doing it, we're just doing it, you know, and, and, uh, it, and we're telling the story that we're telling. Um, but that was the initial attraction for me, definitely, was like the uh, higher ups, so to speak, uh, on the writing. I think once we started doing it, the, you know, we were very fortunate in that the, the crew that we had were a really fun group of people that kind of kept the set light mm -hmm. and the cast were all really fun and I think enjoyed goofing off with each other both on set and off set and so that I think it, it I don't know if that you know you don't get to see those things in everything you see in the show but I, I think some of that hopefully comes across the just the fun that yeah you and I did a lot of scenes together but it was fun to just kind of goof off in those down times and talk about various things give him parenting advice right i don't have any children i just yeah, like no. to give parenting yeah. advice yeah i got a lot of parenting advice from single people on this job yeah yeah and is it working is my potty training tips are they working yeah no it's working great right. he cries a lot but he does what i want him to yeah that's all that matters that's all that matters randolph and wetterland my character actually changes um they had they were talking about it before uh whether or not to make her a postal worker uh and so they david had brought that idea to me and i was like oh yeah i really because like mary Kay is fun yeah. but i felt like it was so much more specific just a postal worker in general and like what about the, that location yeah, and postal workers know everything about everyone before anybody else does. So I know when somebody's getting a divorce, before they know, I know who's sleeping with who, everything. You know what I mean? I know if you're getting weird mail all of a sudden. Like, So it was nice that she has, so she is more pragmatic, but also like uh, David and I were talking in the sense of like, she knows a lot. Whether she, how much she lets on to you, yeah. she actually knows a lot. She knows what these people are going through before they intend to share it like i'm sure i'm watching her around beacon on these random date like day dates and i'm like probably driving me like oh there she is well i pray it goes well do you know what i mean like i mean when you know so many things about a town it's like yvonne is the type of character who's a bit guarded with her info yeah and she's sure. not you know she's definitely not a gossip in any way and it's sort of like the kind of thing where she'll just drop something you know, in the middle of... To, to <laughs> People are like, whoa, whoa. And I'm yeah, like, y'all yeah. don't know that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and okay. she knows we don't know it. And it's like, okay, we get it. Yeah, here we go. So. Yeah. Wow, which is nice. But yeah, there's a challenge, right? To pack it all in. Jenkins, Nunez, and Kissinger on whether their pilot reveals too much. Um, no. I, I think that these episodes are so short. To do serialized storytelling in 21 minutes... Per episode and have a cast this size and have them all be fantastic there are so many plates you can spin and keep it very interesting and make things actually progress every episode without <laughs> actually um, letting the cat out of the bag so the story is still moving forward but I think that the moves in each episode are learning more about each character and their life as opposed to having some massive twist that is the incentive to watch the show, and we have those. But I think the twists are more like emotional, and how are these characters relating to each other? It's funny you said that, because that's what I thought too. When we first started shooting, I'm like, you guys, really? And, and they were like, no, no, we're gonna do this, and they're not wrong. 
it's it's fine. But I was I thought of that too. I'm like, why don't we kick it like a couple of episodes in? And like, no, we don't need to do that. And, and David's I right. I think in today's is, television world, also, you have to grab people's attention quickly. That's what yeah. David said. Like hit a deer and then put it in the car. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the artist that's the creator's shot when all this call when all is said and done. And so. Well, I mean, I think that it's something that we talked about a lot, too, and it is, it's weird to mix these two tones, which normally can kind of fight each other. I mean, you want the show to be actually laugh-out-loud funny, not a half-hour comedy that seems like it should be funny, but then you also want to hit beats that are really dramatic and really play it straight, and to alternate and to get that mix right, I think, is the big challenge of the season, and I don't know, you guys will tell us if we've done it or not. Um, Wetterland and Randolph on the challenges of a pilot. I mean, any pilot is going to be like, there's two lines to say who you are. You know, I'm, I'm, I work at a funeral home, and I'm a temp, and there's nothing else going on. Well, in saying nothing else going on, you kind of get a lot about what that person is, is right. doing with their lives. If somebody's doing nothing with their lives, you're going to imagine they're kind of depressed or, you know, aimless. And um, she goes on a lot of bad dates, which is somebody we've all met. Sinek and Cassidy, I'm working with different directors. It was definitely, it was definitely strange. I mean, it was, it was weird because the crew is the same, the cast is the same, and then you have a new director for two episodes at a time, and so it put the directors a bit more in the learning curve of how the crew communicates and their vision versus the crew who's done this a bunch. They, you know. That's where you maybe need to trust your DP and trust your, your camera team. That, oh, okay, actually, we can shoot this this way. But they were all, they were all really nice guys, I think. I enjoyed, I enjoyed working with Shaka King a lot. I'd seen his film Newly Weeds. And so uh, working with him, I think, as a director, he, he was somebody who I think trusted the team and... and uh, was open to a lot of ideas from anybody and everybody. Yeah, and it's pretty common uh, for the directors to change on episodic TV, um, the single camera episodic TV. So I was pretty used to it. Randolph and Wetterland on future spotlight episodes for their characters. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And um, not in a whole episode because we only have ten, and there's more than ten people, isn't it? Yeah. But um, definitely, yeah. There are. We all have somewhat of a moment or like a turning point if you will uh, throughout the season which is nice because I was saying like there's a group but then what's so great about it because we wouldn't have known each other outside of speaking small but it's not that small right yeah. we probably wouldn't be hanging out necessarily but it's nice when people have they didn't like get paired off or like other interactions that wouldn't happen or like let me go help you do this or that, yeah. which is really nice. I really like that. Yeah. That's like the, the good part, the juicy part. Randolph and Wetterland on whether they know the show is ending. Yeah, I, thus far, I think Yvonne is just trying to figure out how to, to make it to stop. Do you know what I mean? For her, it's very invasive, and it's like... Yvonne is the worst. A, an, an attack. She if sees it as like an attack, like an unwanted attack for her yeah. so is, i think for more so for her she's like she's in these meetings just to be like i don't even care why i just need to get educated to figure out how i personally y'all can do what you want but how i personally can get this to stop and i can move on with my life but it's having at a tough time for her do you know what i mean uh because she was in a relationship at least from what we talked about like she was in a relationship and yeah. she ended it and moved here Right, and this is out of her. She's not a native. I don't know if everyone is. Yeah, I, I think Yvonne's not a native. She's for I... sure not a native. She recently moved here, and right, like I think we said, like she's probably from New York City, moved here, or like a city, a more urban place, moved here, and then this happens, and she's like, "What?" And is so disturbed by it. But uh, for example, breaking up a relationship, and then someone is telling you you're special. And it's that thing, right? Like, it's almost like when you go to therapy. If your therapist says it, then you're like, okay, well, you you don't have to lie to me, right? But your friends will be like, no, you're special. Mm -hmm. No, you're just saying that mm -hmm. to be nice. So it's this mm -hmm. thing of, like, it's dramatic and it's mm -hmm. hilarious. But we literally need something otherworldly to tell us. It's like either that bad or that intense, mm -hmm. right? To tell us 
we're worth it. We're special. We're valued. Because if Joe Schmo told us on the street, we wouldn't believe it. Sinek. No, David hasn't told us anything. I, I don't know if it's the most helpful thing. I kind of feel like, you know, we're all building this together. It might, at some point, hopefully he'll tell us. <laughs> Jenkins, Nunez, and Kissinger. I have it mapped out. I'll, it's, I, it's, it's in the glove compartment. I'm holding it hostage. That's, yeah, that's, that's, for, that's for a, a, a renegotiation. Don't tell them where it is, Oscar. <laughs> that's part of keeping it secret. God. All right, it's in the glove compartment. I'll, I'll tell you that. Don't, 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 don't tell the car. God, just don't tell them the color of the car. Jenkins, Nunez, and Kissinger on a second season. Yeah, I hope it, it would be nice if it were more than one season. Yeah, hopefully. That's our you'll, intention. You'd have to ask we'll know uh, soon. TBS we'll know soon. marketing. It airs in October, here. so it'll, we'll know soon, right? Kevin Riley said we got a six-season pickup. <laughs> I definitely heard that. Should yeah, we start a rumor? Yeah. I've been spending a lot of money, so <laughs> yeah. I, mean, like I think that's true. Four, that'd yeah. be crazy. It's going to be great. Thanks for listening to this interview. People of Earth premieres on October 31st on TBS.